hours of Fox News Channel special presentation. On the Brink, answers from the abyss. Now, Neil Cavuto. France is ahead of us. Actually, as of last night, more than a dozen countries are ahead of us. Because for the first time in 70 years, the United States of America is no longer the top financial dog on earth. The Investment Ratings Agency, Standard & Boards, taking care of that yesterday, officially dinging our top-notch AAA rating and kicking us out of a very elite club that includes the likes of France, Germany, Switzerland, Australia. But not us. Not now. We are in with Belgium and New Zealand now, and just getting our arms around that one not proving easy now. For years, top of the heap, now all but kicked to the curb. And growing fears, my friends, come Monday morning. We are going to get kicked in the markets. We just don't know. Here is what we do know. After all of this spending, the world is essentially telling us we are spent and the jig is up and the pain could be severe. And we are all over the fallout that could be swift with the likes of presidential candidates Michelle Bachman, Ron Paul, and Herman Cain, who say that the spending's got to stop. Democratic Congressman Dennis Kucinich, who says that the spending's actually got to double. And Mark Zandi, who says both Republicans and Democrats got to talk. But before that, first this, and the latest, what's happening right now. Georgia Republican Jack Kingston calling on Congress to reconvene immediately to pass a new deal with more cuts in the wake of the downgrade. The congressman will be here later this hour. China taking a shot at us, wasting no time saying it. I quote, the good old days of borrowing are over. In Europe, G7 finance ministers will meet this weekend to discuss the impact of the downgrade and the Dow losing 700 points this week, and that was before the S&P announcement. Saudi Arabia, the first market on earth to trade on this news since this news, and it wasn't pretty. Stocks there down about 5.5%. Banking issues in particular getting clobbered. The problem here is not the downgrade, it's the debt that brought it on. A message that seems to be getting lost in this drama, but not with my next guest, Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul on the phone. Congressman, uh, you weren't and aren't surprised, but what now? Well, it looks like we're going in, we're in for big trouble because we haven't dealt with the problem. You know, I'm surprised it took them so long to downgrade. I didn't think, you know, it should have had that rating for a long, long time. But uh, people are coming to the realities. But, you know, you wonder about S&P because they're usually pretty slow. Uh, so I think it's very, very bad. And uh, it's interesting that when we were working on raising the debt limit over my objection, they kept saying, well, if you don't raise the debt limit, uh, we're going to downgrade you. So we raised the debt limit, so they downgrade, which means that the spending is not under control. But the other thing that bothered me is I, I read where S&P said that one of the reasons they downgraded was that we weren't accepting, you know, tax increases. So uh, there's a lot of confused uh, economic ideas out there, but uh, I think we're in for a lot of trouble, which is what I've been saying for a long time. You know, the administration is, is already... Uh Kind of pointing fingers at S&P that their math is a little specious and um, it could be a case of accusing the accused. But what do you uh, uh, make of that? You mean about the Treasury saying, well, they made a mistake? Right, right, right. In other words, this yeah. is kind of S&P's fault. Well, the Congress is making even bigger mistakes because they keep talking about slashing and cutting and all this, but there have been no suggestions of cutting anything. It's always the cutting from the baseline, which is a steady increase. And finally, the people who are looking at the bonds are realizing it. But to me, it's interesting that although they're downrating it, they're still the world are buying our treasury bills and our bonds and our interest rates alone. For now, for Someday. now. You know, but Congressman, is, I, I, but, but, right. we got to be careful. we got to be careful. I, I guess what I'm asking is, um, we are concerned about the downgrade and, and whether uh, it's going to cost us more just for people to buy our debt and our notes and our bonds. And, and you're, you're quite right to point out that people have still been pouncing on our securities as good havens. Uh, but how long do you really think that will be the case? And are we really more benefiting because the rest of the world just stinks more than we do? Yeah, I think, the, though, the market is more powerful than the agencies who grade the bonds and even Congress. Economic laws are powerful, which means that if you follow free market economics, 
interest rates will go up regardless of bond ratings, and this might be just the incentive to start the rates going up again. But there's no way in the world that you can print money endlessly and bail out everybody and spend endlessly and not expect the dollar to be devalued as it is, and it's a worldwide currency, and that's why this is so serious. But under those conditions, you depreciate the currency, interest rates are destined to go up. It's just a matter of time. All right. When I was in uh, your fine city uh, this past week, and you guys cobbled together this deal, of which you were very, very critical, as was your son, the Senator Rand Paul, um, the issue came up that if you guys were to cut too much, not you and your son, but if you were to cut too much, it would be onerous for the economy at this iffy stage. So is there even going to be an appetite for cutting more spending in this environment? No, there isn't. There's always uh, there's always a special interest that comes up. If you even suggest freezing the budget, that is considered a cut. Freezing the budget is a cut. And anybody who has their budget frozen yells and screams. Can you imagine what the military industrial complex would say if you suggested freezing? They're getting a you know a percentage increase, and it's not enough. And that's the way with every entitlement system program there is. So we're locked in on this course, and uh, until we revamp. The system entirely, the monetary system, the entitlement notions, the definition of entitlements versus rights, our foreign policy. Believe me, within the next year or two, we will be dealing with what, what kind of country we want in the future and what economic policies we're going to follow. You know, it's interesting. I guess we, it's hard to gauge right now, Congressman, but uh, uh, a downgrade could lead to a lot of messier things, but we'll have to watch extremely closely. Congressman, thank you uh, very much. Always thank good you. seeing you. Again, to outline that deal, that was the source of some of this concern and maybe S&P jumping here. Uh, this $2.1 trillion uh, debt deal you hear so much about is $2.1 trillion over 10 years, but 70% of those cuts come after the year 2017, $28 billion over the next year. Hence this uh, criticism by the part of S&P that it really wasn't much better than the paper it was printed on. Anyway, the stunner from the White House this morning is no word from the White House this morning.